Hello and welcome to Gardening of 58 North. So in this video I'd like to show you how to propagate jade plants from cuttings. So there's two techniques that work well. I'll go through each one. Basically one of them is stem cuttings which is the most common technique and the other one is leaf cuttings. And I'll talk about why you might use one over the other, the advantages and disadvantages of each and also how to carry out the cuttings themselves as well. So first of all you need a jade plant um, or you just need to have a cutting that someone's given to you already but if you don't already have a cutting I'd like to show you how to take one. So this is a jade plant here, this needs a bit of work. Um, I'd like to have a clear stem at the bottom of my jade plants to uh, give off more of a, a small tree appearance so I'm going to cut off these lower branches. So when it comes to cutting the jade plant it's not too technical but there's just a couple of things to, to bear in mind such as where to cut. So I'm just going to zoom in now and give you an example. So when you look at one of the stems of a jade plant, you should be able to see these lines and almost like rings going around the outside. Now it's more obvious on the larger older stems, but you'll also see this on the younger stems. And basically, this is where the leaves used to attach, they're basically uh, leaf scars where the leaves were attached to the main uh, stem. But this is also the section where new growth will appear from, and, and that will be either roots, or it will be leaves and new shoots. So you need to cut this in a way that makes the most of this. So basically when you first cut it for a cutting you want to make sure that you, d you don't leave a large section that dies off and can lead to infection or anything on the, on the original mother plant, you don't want to damage that. So when it comes to cutting this, if you were to cut it right in the middle, what this would leave is quite a bit of a stump at the, at the top here. That stump would probably callus over and fall off, which isn't a big issue, but it just looks a bit unsightly. So what the best thing to do is, is cut just above um, one of these nodes here, so I would cut this around this height. You want to leave a little bit of space though, the reason being is what the plant does is it, because it can't grow from above uh, this shoot, if there isn't another shoot above it, it will actually terminate this section, it will dry up and fall off and you want it to be able to have a little bit of that section that can terminate and fall off because where this line is the plant will actually form a natural barrier and stop any infection from coming into the rest of the plant. So you need to leave a little bit of material but just not too much that it looks unsightly, so I would cut this around about here. So what that does is it allows the mother plant to regrow from this section here where the line is and then you'll have a much nicer looking mother plant. When it comes to taking the cuttings themselves, this isn't too important, it's just if you want to keep your mother plant looking nice then it's something that you need to think about. So I'm just going to go ahead now and cut the lower branches off my jade plant. So now that you've got some cuttings taken off of the original mother plant, you now need to prepare them to make sure they'll take root properly and grow into to new plants. So I'm going to start off with the stem cutting technique and then I'm going to talk about the leaf cutting technique, but the two are kind of related, as in when you're doing stem cuttings you'll probably have plenty of leaf left over which you can then use for leaf cuttings if you would like to. I'll go into a couple of reasons about what, why, why you do each now and also what time of year to do this. So when it comes to time of year, it's not too important, but generally, if you want the best success rate, you need to do it in spring or summer. If you do it in autumn or winter, it will probably still succeed, but it will take much longer for the plants to establish roots. Within that time, there's more chance for them to dry out or for them to start rotting and dying. So you'll get much better success in spring and summer, normally a 100% success rate. If you do this in autumn and winter, the success rate is lower, but it's still easily achievable. So when it comes to different types of cuttings, whether it be stem or leaf cutting, the advantage of uh, the stem cutting is it's much quicker in that you get an established plant quite quickly. You've got a lot of material straight away so it already looks like an established plant. That material has plenty of leaves already so that it will start growing straight away, grow quickly and you'll have a large plant in just a year or two. It's also much more successful. There's much more chance that the roots will grow and establish before it dries out and dies. And so the success rate is nearly always 100%. With uh, leaf cuttings, success rate is close to 50%. Um, it's just a bit lower and it's a little bit more tricky to do when it comes to preparation and things like that. And the reason you would use a leaf cutting over a stem cutting, I would always do stem cuttings if possible. The only reason I would do a leaf cutting is if you want to start a really small bonsai because the new plants that come up from a leaf cutting are incredibly small and they have really tiny leaves so it just gives you a bit more choice when it comes to bonsai. And the other reason I would use leaf cutting over stem cutting would be because you don't have enough material so you don't want to lose the shape of your nice jade plant but you want to produce more plants. If you take a, a, a stem off you're going to lose some of those nice branches and it might ruin the look of your plant so what you can do with a leaf cutting is just pull off a single leaf from your plant, it doesn't take away too much from its overall design and you can start propagating new plants. So if you're short of materials for cuttings, leaf cuttings are the way to go, but generally I would always do stem cuttings. It's always a lot easier with stem cuttings and you get much faster results. 
So now you've got your cuttings, it's time to prepare them for, uh, for putting them in the soil and rooting. So you want to think about size. You can actually propagate from almost any size with jade plants, which is, which is one of the reasons they're so easy. You can have a cutting which is as small as a leaf or even just one or two sections of stem with one or two leaves attached. That will work. Um, you can also go right up to quite large sizes. I've done it on two large branches in the past which were probably about five or six times the size of this and they rooted no problem as well. So it doesn't really matter when it comes to the size of the cutting. I tend to like to keep them a little bit smaller though. So for example, I will probably only do about five to 10 centimeters in length for most cuttings. So two to four inches generally. I just find this is a nice manageable size. The plants are a bit easy, more easily to handle and um, they tend to grow a little bit better. But it, as I say, it doesn't really matter when it comes to the size of the cuttings. What does seem to happen though is if the cuttings are really big it takes a lot longer for them to root and get established. The smaller cut cuttings generally get established faster and do a little bit better. So if you can, keep them around that 5-10 centimeter range and you'll get better success. So when we cut them off from the mother plant we left a little bit of stem at the bottom here. What will happen here is this will dry up and fall off. So you just want to cut off that small section there. Again leaving a little bit so it can callus over and drop off. So we'll just cut it off like that that will callus probably drop off. So the next thing to do is actually pull off the leaves. Now this one's a little bit too long, so I would like to reduce the size of this cutting to a more manageable size. So I'm gonna cut it off around about this height here. And then what you want to do is remove the lower leaves. So you just gently pull them off. Now if you're doing leaf cuttings, this is basically what you do on the original mother plant. You just want to carefully pull them off. If you're doing a stem cutting, uh, don't worry about leaving these tiny little sections of, of leaf. That's not a big issue. But if you're doing it for leaf cuttings, then the ones that you pull off and they don't have any section at the bottom, they're not going to take for leaf cuttings. You really do need that very bottom section. So for a successful uh, leaf cutting, what you're looking for is the very bottom bit of the leaf connected with, so it should be like a C shape like this. You can see like a nice curve in that one. If it looks flat like this, it's probably because you've not taken the very bottom of the leaf off and it's very unlikely that this will actually take root if you try and make a cutting from it. So you're looking for ones with that C shape uh, on the end of them and that will give you much more chance that they'll actually take root. So now that you've got your cutting um, and you're taking off the lower leaves, what you want to do is look at the upper leaves as well. You don't want to have a huge amount of leaf area on the plant. Basically, the bottom section is what you're going to be sparing under underground, which is why you need to remove the leaves. But also, you want to remove a few more leaves just because there'll be a lot of moisture lost from the leaves and you don't want to lose too much moisture because if they dry out too quickly, they won't have time to root. So just remove some of the, the largest leaves. There's an awful lot of them. So this is what your cutting should look like. Now what you'll need to do is you'll need to wait probably about a week or two. And the reason for that is if you plant this in the soil now, these wounds are all fresh. The, the, the disease and rot can set in and your cutting might not work. So what you need to do is just leave it somewhere um, somewhere cool, not in direct sunlight, not anywhere hot so it doesn't dry out too fast, but you don't want it anywhere damp or really shady. So you just want it in a bright location with decent airflow so it dries out within a week or two. And what will happen is these tiny little bits of leaves that are left will fall off. The ends will callus over and go dry and maybe even go a little bit brown in colour and then you know it's ready for putting into the soil. So after a week or two, it should, as I say, have dried out slightly. You'll then want to get it ready with a pot. Now when it comes to soil, they're not too fussy. Um, you can actually do it in multi-purpose compost. You just have to be very careful with how much water you give it. But the best thing to use is probably seed and cutting compost or even succulent and cacti compost. The main issue with uh, jade plant cuttings is the fact that they might rot in the soil if the soil is too wet. So you want to get a nice free draining compost. The one I'm using is basically 50% perlite, 50% multi-purpose compost. You can just use grit or something else to add to the drainage. Basically, it just needs to be a really well free drained compost so that it doesn't stay too wet and the cuttings don't rot. So for this example, I'm not letting this dry out. I will let this dry out and then pot it up later, but I'm just doing this as an example for now. But basically, you just want to poke it into the soil burying probably about an inch or so of the stem just so it's stable and then you just fill in behind it. What you need to do once it's in the soil is you need to be patient it can take several weeks for it to take root and you need to put it in the right position so you want to have it somewhere where it has bright light so like somewhere like a windowsill but try and avoid the midday sun 
sun first thing in the morning or last thing in the evening is fine but you don't want any direct sun because until the roots are established there's no way for this plant to absorb more water and if it dries out too quickly it will just die so you want to have it somewhere bright so it can photosynthesize because it needs some energy from the sun to produce those roots it can produce roots in low light conditions but it just takes a lot longer and it will run out of energy faster and it's less likely to succeed and when it comes to temperature Anywhere above 20 degrees, between 20 and 30 degrees normally is a, is a good temperature range for getting these cuttings started. Unfortunately that's the, the temperature that most people's houses are at. So any household environment should be fine for this. If it's too cold, so for example in winter below 20, it can take a long time to, for the cuttings to take root and they'll probably die before the roots have formed or they'll start rotting. If it's too hot above 30 degrees, they normally dry out too quickly and then they dry out before the roots can get established. So when it comes to watering whilst we're at this very early cutting stage, put them in some slightly damp compost and then don't water them at all for, for probably about two or three weeks or until you notice the, com the compost is bone dry. You'll need to put your, your, your finger and tickle the surface of the compost, fill down by about two or three centimeters, preferably away from the, the main stem because you don't want to damage those newly formed roots. And you just want to check that it's completely bone dry before you then give it some more water. And when you do water it, just water it a small amount. You don't want it really damp, you just want it slightly damp. At this early stage, it's very easy to overwater because the roots aren't established. It's not absorbing much water from the compost, so the compost will stay wet for a long time. So it's very important that you're very sparing on the, on the watering and that you don't overdo it. If you overdo it, it will probably rot and die. If you underdo it, it will just take longer to root and it will just shrivel up slightly, but it shouldn't die. So, but if, you, if you go in one way or the other, try and underwater rather than overwatering the cuttings. Now what you'll notice, and I'll put a time lapse up of this with these cuttings that I'm going to do today, is you'll notice that the plant shrivels up slightly. It might look like it's starting to suffer. That's perfectly normal. The plant is gonna shrivel up slightly until it gets its roots established. Also, when it does start first growing its roots, you should hopefully notice that the leaves start to plump up slightly. That's the first sign, sign that the roots are growing and the cutting is going to be successful. You won't know until it's 100% ready though and successful until it starts putting on new growth. If it puts on a tiny bit of new growth, and it's very, very slow, it's still probably not fully rooted. But if the growth is coming through quite strong and it's definitely putting on two or three sets of leaves and not just one new set of leaves, then you know it's fully rooted and you can just water it like you would a normal jade plant and you can then transfer it to a sunnier location. Now when the leaves start to plump up slightly, you can then already start to put it in a slightly sunnier location, still avoid midday sun, but once you get those, that strong growth coming through, then you can put it in a really sunny location and give it midday sun again. The only thing I would say is try and introduce it slowly. If it goes straight from a, a lower light level conditions to very high intense sunlight, it can scorch the leaves. So try and introduce it a little bit by maybe just having a few more hours of daylight every day or just having a little bit of shade until you eventually get it acclimatized. So I'd like to go into a little bit more detail about the leaf cuttings now. Now when it comes to trying to break the leaf off the stem, it can be very difficult to break off the full leaf and you're often just left with these little stubs and if you don't get the very base of it, as I say, you won't actually uh, take root. Now one way to do this with a bit more ease, um, instead of just pulling it off and you'll probably just leave a stump on the, of the uh, leaf on the stem, is if you get your fingernail and you just want to have it floss with the stem and you just want to kind of push around underneath it like that. Try not to dig into the stem, at the same time pushing your way with the other hand and then you should be able to very carefully tease off um, the leaf with the bottom of the leaf still intact. So I'll show you an example on these ones. The one on the left here, if I just kind of pull that off, it quite often snaps like that. You've still got a little section of leaf on the bottom there. But if you can, try and slide, uh, slide your nail underneath, carefully pull at the same time. You have to be very delicate with it though, because you don't want to damage, as I say, you don't want to break off the the, uh, the the base of the leaf, and you don't want to damage the stem of the main plant. And you can see there, you can just very carefully tease off the uh, the leaf there, and you've got the base of the leaf. So that's just one take one tip I can give you uh, to try and get the leaves off with with the base still intact. So when it comes to leaf cuttings, the technique is slightly different to the stem cuttings, but not too different. Basically, you want the same type of soil. It needs to be very free draining. I personally like to do it in large trays. The reason is the success rate is quite low with leaf cuttings, so you want to make sure that you've got plenty of chance that it'll actually work. Again, the same with the stem cuttings. Once you've taken the leaves off the plant, allow them to dry for a week or two, just to make sure it calyxes over, reduce any chance of any rot or anything setting in like that. 
and then you want when you want to get the actual leaf itself you can just place it on the surface there's a chance it might work but generally when the new suits try to appear they will always appear from this base here which is why you need that base of the leaf still connected to it um, and if there's just on the surface often the, the roots will dry out before they get into the compost so the way that this works the best is just to get the leaf and just very gently bury the end in like that and leave the rest of the leaf above the ground. You don't want to bury the leaf, it needs to have some light still getting to it so it can photosynthesize and if you completely bury it, it will just basically suffocate and, uh, and just be buried and die. So you need to have it slightly exposed, so just just the tip of the, uh, the leaf stalk there, buried underground and the rest of it completely out. And you just want to completely fill up your tray like this and you won't really notice much going on with these. Um, quite often I find these don't even shrivel up and dry out too much, not as much as the stem cuttings. I think because they're lying on damp, um, damp compost, they tend to dry out a little bit slower. And when it comes to the stem cuttings, you'll probably see results in about two or three weeks at the quickest, but usually about a month or two. With these, it can take up to six months until you see results. But what you'll notice is, um, a very very small plant just appearing from the very base of the leaf. Now it will be extremely small. The new leaves are absolutely minute. I'll see if I can find one of you now to see this, what I mean. So this here is an example of a leaf cutting which is just starting to grow. This isn't one that I've actually taken. This is a, a leaf that just fell off my plant, landed on the surface of the compost and just naturally started to grow. So they can do this by themselves sometimes if you just look at the surface of your compost. Quite often when the leaf naturally falls off it has that entire uh, stalk section attached so it's actually more likely that it might take root. So this one as you can see it started to dry out there the original leaf. You can see the size of the original leaf. And at the very base of it you get this small shoot coming up with a couple of small leaves. But this is just to show you an example of how small they are. It'll come up with a tiny bit of the stem as well and I'll put a root down but the new leaves are really tiny, you can see compared with the original leaf and this isn't even a particularly large um, jade plant leaf, you can see can, in comparison with the other ones um, how small this can be. So that gives you an idea of how small the new plant is when it comes up and that's why it takes so long to grow into a decent sized plant, it's a very small plant to begin with, it takes a long time to get to a decent size but those very small leaves they will remain on this plant for years and if you keep it in a very small pot and well pruned, you can keep these small leaves for several years. So if you're looking for a bonsai style jade and you want to get really small leaves, this is probably one of the best ways to do it because you can get those really miniature leaves and they can continue for years if it's treated in the right way. So when it comes to watering this, it's very similar to the stem cuttings. Just keep it very slightly damp, but allow it to dry out in between waterings. And um, you'll just be keeping an eye out for those young shoots coming up. When they do come up and you've got three or four leaves established, it's then time to repot them. What I would recommend doing is getting a very small stick or the end of a spoon, something like a, a small bamboo cane or, something, or like a toothpick. And you want to very carefully lift up the original leaf, put down the, uh, the small cane probably about an inch away from the plant, go down and then slowly pull up and at the same time pull up the leaf because the roots will be very delicate and so will be the new cutting. And then you should come up and you should have the new plant on the end and attached should be a small bit of compost and some root. You can then put this into an individual pot, pot it on and start growing it like a normal jade plant. But as I say, these can take a long time, up to six months normally. As long as the leaf is still green, there's still a chance it's going to work. And these can stay green for a long time because they're in contact with that compost. So if they're still green, just keep waiting. They'll eventually come up, but it is a very slow process with the leaves. Uh, Temperature-wise, it's the same as the other type of cutting. Same with light levels. Keep it away from direct sunlight until you see that new growth coming through. Once the new growth does come through, then you can put it in a much brighter location with direct sunshine. So that's all for this video. If you have any uh, questions or anything, put them in the comment section. I'll try and reply. But that's how, that's basically the two main techniques for taking cuttings from jade plants. It's leaf cuttings and also stem cuttings. Both types are normally quite successful. Leaf cuttings not quite as much, normally close to the 50% success rate, unless you can get plenty of that original uh, bottom bit of the, the leaf still attached, then you can get closer to 100%. With stem cuttings, it's nearly always 100%, as long as you don't allow them to rot. That's, that's one of the key things.